EGB, your eSports betting world. The only place to find the widest choice of popular games and matches to win real money. Choose your bet on a single event or express of several matches with dizzy odds. Serving the market for seven years with over 800,000 users. Join now to get your bonus for the first deposit up to $600. EGB, you know for sure who's going to win. Dire team pick. Keeper of the light. <laughs> Dire team pick. Lich. Radiant team pick. Bounty hunter. Radiant team back. Imba spirit. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Dusk. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ten. Radiant team pick. I speak for the trees.
Hello guys and welcome back, Fly the Moon 2.0 versus Extreme I'm here. Uh, we are here. Uh, good day friends, and here we go with the Arena of Blood Season 2 tournament. We are glad to see you on the UCC broadcast. In the next couple hours, all action, drama, blood, and awesome plays are for you. Guys, our partner AGB.com gives you an awesome proposal. What is this proposal? <laughs> the first deposit bonus of up to $600. At AGB.com, you can also find convenient service, daily quests, and a bonus system. Interested? Click on the banner under the broadcast to learn more. My name is DSwordfish. I'll be your caster for today. As I mentioned earlier, we have Flight of Moon 2.0 versus Extremum right here on this channel. How exciting is this? Very excited. I'm very excited, personally. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's uh, an exciting time for sure. Because Extremum, you know, they come in, they actually have a new coach, I believe Mulk just joined the coach, an XVP coach as well. Very excited to watch uh, Extremum kind of play again. And Flight of Moon 2.0 is a team that I was very sad that they didn't get invited, but luckily they went in through the qualifiers, so still happy about them. Let's get right into the draft though. Flight of Moon 2.0, they go with the Coddle Chen, interesting, with the Naga Siren Ember Spirit, so they have a, a bit of a team fight combo here with the Coddle Naga Siren, I think that's the idea. A lot of AoE control, a lot of AoE damage. In general, just very good team fight and very good mid game with a bit of pushing power from the Chen. And the idea is that Naga Siren is kind of your win condition. Lack of stuns, though. Lack of stuns, which could be a problem. For Extreme, though, a very, very odd draft. Seems to be an early game oriented draft around the Bounty Hunter, who does beat the Naga Siren in lane, but does struggle afterwards against her. And the idea from Extreme seems to be. Uh, to just play the lanes really strong, with Lich and Tusk being really strong laners, try to put as much pressure as possible, use NP's mobility to get early kills, and then as soon as you get track, go ham, right? You already have enough pushing power on this team, you're probably going to run the NP or the Bounty Hunter as the carry, and the other one as the off lane. you kind of need a mid laner, so I wouldn't mind seeing a DK, to be honest, for XTM, but you just kind of need this kind of early game draft before Naga Siren gets online. Ever since they kind of nerfed the... Is you, Jesus, you talk too fast. Uh, we are so, I'm sorry. I know that for people that are not English natives, it might be a bit hard to understand me. So I will, I will go slower so you can understand me. Uh, if English is your second language, it might be a bit difficult, so I do apologize. All right, so the point here, extreme here. They are looking for a mid laner, probably, that will suit their needs of both being a okay team fighter that can potentially deal with Naga Siren, but also a good pusher. You're looking for a hero that can have a des decent early game, generally. Whereas Fly the Moon, I'm not really sure. You kind of need a hero that will bring team fight to the table, a hero that can, a, a hero that can bring also some catch. The Beastmaster was actually a good idea. Maybe you go for a Legion Commander, perhaps here as an option. Wouldn't be that bad. The fact that Legion Commander is not great against what Extreme is running, but you kind of need this hero. I would have loved the Centaur actually. Originally. Oh, Centaur's still in the pool. Okay, I, I don't mind the Centaur at all. It's gonna be a Mars. Mm. Mars feeds into the team fight lineup that you're running, but I think it, it feeds a bit too much. Now at this point you have this Wombo combo! But... It's a bit too much at this point, right? Extremum can just ignore the team fights and split push you. It's always an option for them. In fact, Extremum right now... Oh no, there's no Lycan available. Lycan would have been really good. I still like the DK pick here for Extremum, to be honest, here in the mid lane. I'm gonna see a store spirit instead as a counter to the ember. Okay. So Extreme is not going for the pushing draft I was originally envisioning. The idea is pick off, pick off, pick off. You're looking to just destroy the early and just run down the enemy team. And you have some some enough push to just bring this back because of that. Strong lanes that lead into pick off potential and a very strong early mid game before five on five engagements happen. The idea is that you're going to fight with you're, you're going to try to to fight when you have numeric superiority or when you can find someone with their pants down and you can just surprise them. Whereas Fly the Moon is always going to try to fight 5-on-5 five five engagements, at least when Naga Siren is ready, before 4-on-4 four four engagements, right? Try to play the 4-protect-1 rule. Fly the Moon has really easy execution in the draft, but it is very slow. That's kind of the trade-off. Whereas Extremum has a difficult draft to execute, but very, very good draft if you can execute it well, honestly. And it's, I really like what Extremum is running. I want to side with Extremum just because they have a solid draft, uh, in a creative draft to some degree as well. I do like that a lot. And I like that they're running the Mounty Hunter. I'm assuming that's Ark, who I think is their carry still. I was going to look up if, if that is Ark. Alright, he does go by Kellen sometimes. Okay, great. So that is Ark on, on the bounty. So, 
Extreme is going to run the bounty as the carry, by the way. Um, earlier I mentioned NPS carry, instead is bounty as carry. Uh, bounty as carry, we have seen a bit, actually, especially in CIS. I think it was B8 that tried it out. In fact, ironically, Navi back in the day, when Navi, when Dendi was still playing with them, they actually run the Bounty Hunter as a carry before the whole Aghanims change and everything. Now Bounty Carry is kind of legit. And with Nature's Prophet in the offlane, you secure the lane, or you have an okay lane against Naga Siren. It's guaranteed. So you're guaranteed to have really solid off and safe lane, which will give the Storm enough time to just kind of push off. And honestly, Bounty Hunter as a carry against the Mars really crushes your strategy. I don't think they were, I don't think they thought the Bounty Hunter was going to go as a carry. I think they thought that was going to go as an offlaner because Bounty Hunter carry against the Mars is brutal. Part of the idea behind Mars is that you get a good laning stage, and then from then on you snowball, right? You you go for early blink or Vlad's or Desolator or whatever it is, and you got <coughs> sorry, you kind of snowball from there. But if Bounty Hunter is stealing all of your gold, which by the way, Janata has buffed considerably in this last new patch, because everything, all the gold went down, but Janata still steal, steals the same amount of gold, it makes it really difficult for this Mars to play his game. And you're not going to have the space grade that you're looking for in the Mars. Ember, despite being good is in the early game, in the mid game, he's not the best space creator as a mid laner. He's not like a Kunkka, for example. He, he can get kills, but... He's also very susceptible to ganks, and can easily be killed with a couple stuns, and Extreme has a fair amount of stuns. So, I'm very confident in Extreme's draft. If they make no mistakes, this game should be theirs. On that, on that I do apologize. A person who is complaining about the, the ads, that's not up to me. Obviously, I'm not in control of the stream. I'm not even the cameraman, so I do apologize for that. I, I personally hate when they do that too in the middle of the games. So, yeah, we, we, we are sorry. I, I am sorry for that as a caster, and I'm sure the production is as well. Uh, the person in charge of the channel is, you know, the, the tournament org's different, right? So, yeah, we, we apologize for the ads in the middle of the game. It's not cool. Uh, that's, that's the case. That should never be the case in a Dota game. Okay. Here. Okay, Black Archangel. It could be in trouble. That's a really good Lightning Light, actually, in the end. And then we're killing in the Lich. Very good start for them. So they rotate the Chen and the Coddle up top. That's something we're seeing. <laughs> the good luck, HF. Have fun, good luck. Interesting. That's what Russians do. Uh, what Russians say, sorry. Have fun, good luck right after they get the first blood is uh, typical. Primo, primo uh, flame here. So the problem here with the... What the Flight of Moon does really well is something a lot of teams are actually starting to do nowadays, which is they surprise by going for a brief trial lane in the off lane, which a lot of teams don't expect. I and mean, then not only do you get the rune, but also you get first blood sometimes. At least you always guarantee securing two runes. And you give the carry usually solo experience for the first level, for the first wave or so, before they can really harass him. Because usually a carry is fine for the first level, because there's not much harassment you can do against the carry first level. Especially with the Naga Siren, has a lot of armor and has really good lane presence. Mm -hmm. And now Fishman comes to the lane, Illidan got a couple, got a bit of experience there. You didn't really lose much, and you got the rune and first blood. It's pretty great. I still find, though, that this lane is probably going to be kind of difficult to deal with, though. Lich with Bounty Hunter is a pretty strong lane, I would imagine. And right now, the lane is just kind of stacked against them. The creeps make it difficult for Bounty Hunter to go. But look at how he's using his Janata. Right now, as a Bounty, you're actually... As a carry Bounty, I'm not really sure. As an offlane Bounty, I'm certain of this. But as a carry Bounty, you're better off getting a Janata hit onto a onto an enemy hero than a creep, right? Like, if, you, if you're going to miss a last hit because you are going to hit the enemy hero with Janata, it's still worth... Because you're the in, in total the net difference is much more, especially up to level two. In fact, once you get level two Janata, your the Janata actually gives you more gold than the last hit itself. Because last hits now give you like thirty two gold. Yeah, there we go. At least on, on melee creeps, of course. So unless the enemy hero is gonna deny it, you always use Janata as uh, as a you know, as an attack against the enemy. Like Bounty doesn't really care. Look at his last hits. He has one last hit. He's okay. He's just stealing gold with Janata. And non is having a really tough lane, even though it doesn't seem like it, because he's just getting hit by Janata all the time. And right now, Kellen is, is just happily farming under the tower, which is the only time where Janata becomes useful to last hit creeps. And you're never really bothered with that. That's fantastic. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, we're going to see this matchup, which we and Eternal Envy, uh, the eternal debate between the two. What is better? Is it a Storm? Is it an Ember? 
Uh, Ember theoretically can evade the Static Remnant with the Slide of Fist, but it's a bit difficult to do because they all have a weird delay on them. Whereas the Storm could just take away your Flame Guard easily with Static Remnant, which is not a problem. That was well done. <laughs> Chen. That is the worst creep to get, by the way, at level, at level 1. The Wild Wings? Oh, so terrible. As Chen. You hate them. The only good thing is that the, the big bird is actually surprisingly low level, so Chen can get it relatively early. But uh, the, the small little bird is useless. Has no aura with him. Deals very bad damage. You much rather get a Centaur camp or a Satyr or the Ghost, for example, but you can't get close to a small camp. That's why I'm surprised they run the Chen in the offlane, to be honest, as opposed to the Chen in the safe lane. I guess Chen is really much better than, than Coddle against the Bounty Hunter, so that might be why. Because the, the creeps can tank the Janata to some degree. But... It's it's tough. I, I don't think the, the, the offlane is that good for him. There you go, he has a little centaur now, that's much better. At least mitigates some magical damage. And they're managing to push Kellen out of lane surprisingly well, huh? Uh, the last hits don't matter too much for a Bounty Hunter. Again, his his core is really cheap, and all that matters is experience. And we don't see many denies on Mars, also Janata again. But we are not seeing a domination either of the lane. He is does have many more last hits, though, than Naga, who is struggling against the NP. NP is playing very similar to how KYXY actually plays often in the SCA server, where you're just kind of going ham against the enemy carry, and you don't really care much more about your own last hits. You just want to destroy the enemy carry. And honestly, for being NP versus Naga, he's doing very well. He has a lot of denies. I can only presume a majority of them are on Treants, but what he's doing very well is managing to keep the la Naga's last hits kind of low, considering one or two are definitely on Treants as well. And later we'll see net worth and we'll see how this chart completely changes. I don't actually love going for last hits denies as a chart against a bounty hunter. I think it's much better to go for... Oh, he has a sentry there. Wow, that's surprising. Veleor was actually carrying a sentry and allowed them to not only de-ward because of that sentry placement, but also hurt Stormstormer quite a lot. You do get a kill in the top lane, it seems, against the Lich, which is a big deal. Because of the rotation of the Tusk, they've weakened your lane a bit. But you force a rotation from the Kado and that means that NP can fully harass the Naga now for a bit. Which is not bad. Mars is trying to go for a kill here on the, on the on the Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter going really low. What's happening to him? I don't really know. Can he get back home? I'm not really sure. HP about to go down. Bounty Hunter! Cameraman! Please go to him! There we go! And they finally gave him the shield. They were actually trying to harass him under the tower. And it was successful. Nongrada though is out of mana. And Kellen doesn't have any more healing. His large armor has kept him safe for now. There's not enough mana for anything. Kellen is just keeping at bay. They killed No Fear in the backlands. How can you miss every single kill, Cameraman? And Kellen actually survives this engagement. He even gets a sal from the courier, I believe. So he's gonna be a okay in the end. That ends up being a huge win going the way of Extremum, because keeping your bounty under alive. Matters for a lot here. My However, the Ember Spirit is beating the lane against the Storm, though. So he's got some good last hits, and Storm has not yet gone to the jungle. I mean, they're very even. It's a very even lane, but apparently slightly Ember favored. Or Ember is just playing the match a bit better. It's kind of hard to tell. Ember is much stronger than Storm currently, so even if the matchup is slightly Storm favored, technically, just because Ember has been buffed so much, is it's just stronger. We are seeing that he's actually maxing Shuriken 2 next. No point in Shadow Walk just yet, which is what a lot of carry bounties are starting to do these days. In here, uh, we'll see how who recovers. I'm a big fan of God. I always love seeing him or G as he goes by nowadays. I love how <laughs> his name has been shortened over the years. It's almost become a meme at this point. This guy, he's he's a very solid player. One of the, I'm a big fan as well because he's one of the old guard of Russian players, right? So it's always nice to see him succeed. I wish God had, had done well enough to, you know, win some sort of major competition because he was very solid. Big fan of him in LGD Int, big fan of him in Inverted Pro, just his career is very solid. I think he's, he's quite satisfied with it, but of course now he's trying on Extremum. It's relatively new blood, right? So a lot of respect for this guy. Kellen in the, to in the top lane, now being harassed considerably actually by Nongrata. Kellen is starting to struggle a lot against the Mars. He has more lasses than him now, certainly. But he, he just can't get to lane. His great armor and regen allows him to stay in lane a surprising amount, but Mars is a strong laner, so... The idea is that Kellen doesn't really need to win the lane, literally. He just needs to get enough Genatus to annoy 
the four bars, which is why I like this matchup a lot. And once you get tracked, you're gonna rotate anyway and take advantage of the MP, so your goal here is not necessarily to destroy the lane, you're just there to exist. Has a good amount of lasses regardless. Yeah, G and Illidan were teammates before indeed, they were in the... They, they were in the in the vert, all Virtus Pro together, yep, yep, yep. The F and G Virtus Pro as well. Actually, I never thought of that, but now they're actually fighting against each other. Interesting. Who's done better? Hard to say, to be honest. Hard to say. Elden was always known back in the day for his like peculiar pool of heroes. And God was known for being a literal god in the mid lane. He was such a good mechanical player. But as you get older, of course, and the new kids come in, the young ones, the mid ones, you know, the... The, uh, the smales, and you're like, oh, I can't beat these children. It's unfortunate. God kind of went to the wayside. But he's one of the few mid laners from the old guard that didn't move into a different position, you know? Like Resolution, for example, will make him an off laner. God stays in that mid lane. Stalwart. Taking it. And here we go, the net worth. This is what I was talking about, right? Even though it seems like Mars won his lane or was doing pretty well, Bounty Hunter is beating him by a lot. Why? Janata effect, simply. Janata is better than last sitting at this point because uh, you probably have it level 3, so pretty huge thing. And now soon you'll have track. The potential to kill a Mars, though, is, is non-existent, though. I don't think they can actually kill a Mars. I think Valior knows that Illidan's taking these ancients. Is he going to go for this kill? Yes, he can. Illidan is going to go down. No! They miscalculated that snowball to finish him off, and he can't quite get the mirror image off in time, which means... The snowball guarantees the kill. I'm surprised by that. Ilden didn't see him, but they did see Ilden because of the ward and also because of the experience. Oh, they actually didn't see him because of the ward. They just saw him because of the experience. Tusker knew he was there because he was getting experience from the Ancients, so he assumed Ilden had gone to farm the Ancients. Very clever of him. He saw them in the ward earlier, of course. And look at what Ilden's marking. He's like, that area is warded. There's a ward somewhere there. Please help me out and deward it. God is now starting to just recover a bit here on the storm. Uh, it's true, BCC also. BCC also changed into an offlaner, man. But BCC also changed into a carry a long time ago, so it's kind of hard to... Yeah, a lot of offlaners, though. It's true, it's true, it's true. Huh. Good old days. CIS, man. The, the, actually, the position that's most willing to change positions. Dendi's still in the mid lane, no? So... Dendi and God, the, the only guys that <laughs> remain there. His Lina was legendary. I used to love God Lina. He was one of the best Lina players. Ironically, both... in back in the old VP, both God and Ilden played Lina. Uh, and Illidan was actually was the creator of the Lina Shadowblade build back in the day because he used to play her as a carry and used to go for Shadowblade first. And he was the guy that discovered that what's the point of Yield Scepter if you go for Shadowblade? And that was like a big thing for a while. It was very fun. Very good times for Dota when, pe when creativity was an all time high and everyone was not just copying OG, right? Anyway, Mars swaps lanes, obviously. Uh, so we're getting this blast from the past. Mars swaps lanes because he has to. He can't really keep going against the Bounty Hunter. Nobody's going to go against the Bounty Hunter anymore. You don't want to give him the chance to really hit you with Janata. We do see... I'm, I'm presuming Bounty Hunter has track. Yeah, yeah. He does already have track. So everyone has level 6 apparently in this game. Coddle just got it. There we go. So I had level 6 on everyone in this game. I'm surprised not trying to play more aggressively here. And just trying to get some track kills. You kind of need Shadow Walk as well on the Bounty Hunter at this point. Silent was recently playing on Flight of Moon, but I, I don't know. I'm not really sure what team Silent went into now, to be honest. Kai has the first item for God. He's doing quite fine, actually. He's not... Honestly, for the lane that seemed to go a bit in Ember favored, I didn't see Stormstormer do much with this lane. This new German prodigy, right? Well, I'm happy he got a chance in a good team like Flight of Moon, but he, he hasn't done much yet this game, to be honest. Uh, Bounty hasn't either. I'm hoping that he's going to rotate more often. I hope he has a level of invisibility as well. One point in Shadow Walk is too valuable. Because you force enemy team to go for sentries and everything. I know you want to max shuriken, but still. There we go. Track. Okay. He has no point in the shadow block right now. No point in getting it either because you knew you're a tower and you're trying to dive here. Stormstormer. Proper. Very smart that he goes here for a TP. Stopping the bounty hunter. You're wasting his time. While the Naga Siren keeps on farming. You're creating space for her. She's your win condition. Time to go for the middle lane, apparently. That's the, the goal of Extremum. There's a 1k lead here for 
the guys that fly to the moon, which doesn't really mean much, but I, we are seeing that. I mentioned this earlier. Oh, okay, here comes the Tusk from behind, trying to catch Fishman. They use the Will-O-Wisp, but it's a bit too late. Fishman's already gone, and they're going to give it free 100 gold, actually, to the Storm. This is big. Hey, who did they... Who, okay. <laughs> That was a big mistake, God. You shouldn't have doubted about hitting it. You almost had it. That was free 100 gold. Kellen dies at the bottom lane, though, to this Mars. And this Bounty Hunter is not working out too well. I said this earlier. It's a faster draft, but if you don't play this perfectly, it's much harder to execute. Definitely Flight of Moon is a much better draft in terms of ease of execution. And look at this. They're just getting kills left and right and center. That was terrible. Ice Shards, Bailey Or. <laughs> Those Ice Shards were so bad, they confused the Ember. <laughs> He was trying to get himself in one position and the Ember in the other position, but because Ember was so confused by those eye shards, he just like stopped for a second, like what, what just happened? And then he got away because of that. That's crazy. <laughs> Wonderful. And the problem is that when, once we get to the mid game, of course, from Fly the Moon, it's going to become much more difficult, uh, sorry, for Extreme to play this, these team fights. Because you'll have a team that doesn't really have great team fight compared to a team that does. Their whole point is pick off potential. Great sprout, by the way, there to event the. Uh, Prevent the stomp. And now he can get away. No Searing Chains. So it was easy. They didn't have Chakra Magic, I presume, yet. So they couldn't refresh the Searing Chains just quite. Go, gonna go for the tower down bottom. Good thing about Bounty and Pushing Linus is that Janata actually affects towers. Unlike Tidebringer, for example. So it's actually a good spell to, to push. We use the Chain Frost here at the cost of the Lich. Can they get Non-Grata at the very least? No, Chain Frost bounces to the creeps and is ignored completely. Non-Grata is laughing in the face of Black Arc X Angel. Kellen does see Storm Stormer, but against Searing Chain, he's not doing anything this game, man, this Bounty Hunter. Can someone help him? Can someone help him be useful? Just just to give him a role, give him a job. This is Bounty Hunter, man. Just this is what unemployment feels like, right? This guy has just been in the in the coronavirus. He just he's staying home all day. He doesn't really know what to do with his life. He feels very useless. But nobody's really giving him any direction. His dad keeps telling him, What are you doing? You should have gotten a lot of track kills by now. And Bounty Hunter keeps telling his dad, I don't know, dad, I don't know what happened. Mars just keeps killing me. Malik, you're dead too if you... Uh, yeah, you're not careful, man. They have nets, they have a stomp as well. Can they get it in time? He's gonna try to TP, maybe not. Three to party block, it's not gonna work. Mars is already behind you. And Bars is gonna show you his prowess here, killing Malik. Now, poor Velio. Veliar, sorry, going for No Fear. They get a snowball off. They almost killed No Fear with the Spear of Mars, destroy him. And that's gonna be a huge win. In addition to Illidan getting a kill on Kellen. I don't even know how that happens. You're a bounty hunter. And Illidan has no ensnare. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I, the, the two other heroes were there. I presume that's what happened. Someone helped them out. But yeah, they're getting creamed in the early game. And early game is particularly the time when Fly to Moon should be winning. Sorry, we should be losing. It should be the time when Extreme should be just destroying everyone, getting pickoffs. So this lineup is not really working. I like the creativity in their lineup, but Fly to Moon is playing this much better. Fight Moon is playing this much better as it stands. They, they understand when to fight, they're taking the, the right fights, they're getting better pickoffs, they get a Lich easily. Lich has been completely useless. They didn't commit a Will O Wisp here. Ilden, we have Song, by the way, you have to disengage. So they're gonna fight this until they need the Song. Fishman could be in trouble, though. That might be the first track kill. Yeah, they get the track kill. But oh no! The Song sets up perfectly for the arena. Blood! And now they're stuck inside. Storm wants to join the fray. He's like, guys, I wanna die with you. God, though. That was almost a mistake, and Malik was a bit too close. Searing Chains are up in two seconds. Malik uses that Sprout. Quelling Blade is actually not on cooldown, but it doesn't really matter. Can he still hit him with a slide of Fist? They have a way to cancel his TP. That Spear of Mars ready, and they do. Malik cannot TP back home. Spell or item, they're both useless against the Mars. Okay, okay, okay. Another win going the way of Fly to Moon. Your early game is deplorable, extreme. This Ember by Stormstormer has been absolutely amazing. And this Bounty Hunter pick, I am a big fan of this hero. I am a big fan of this hero, I think he's really strong. I wish more people would play him as a carry, but this game is not the best showing of the Bounty Hunter, honestly. I thought they had so much kill potential, but they lost, uh, they didn't get any kills in lane, they couldn't really. The Mar stopped them. They got the last hit. They are not getting kills now. The Naga is farming as much as she wants, really. Mars is really the pickoff machine right now, and he's Farming out of control. Farming heroes as well, out of control. Kellen, okay, another opportunity to go for Fishman. Track kills make these kills worth it. Walrus Punch, yeah, okay, easy. But now you could be in trouble. Everyone nearby, they want to kill Kellen. They want to punish him for this play. Mangrada has the spear. Is it going to hit? Almost! Instead, they force him to go Searing Chains and the Slide of Fist, of course. Velior, also in trouble. The Ensnare hits. 
But the shield keeps him alive for a while. It's hard to really get close to him. Another beautiful searing chain. Stormstormer does not miss those, man. But Stormstormer now in trouble as the ball lightning finally comes in. Extremum gets the counter kill on Stormstormer they were looking for. However, without a track, it doesn't mean as much. God, ball lightning a bit too aggressively there. Had to back out. Okay, Extremum. 13 to 6 to score. 7k lead already for Flight of Moon. It's not looking good. Your Naga is farming really well, so is the Ember. I mean, the Storm is. God is the only one really right now that's kind of working. Okay, Arena Blood to catch a Storm in trouble. What are you doing, Storm? God is actually caught a second time thanks to the Stomp of the Centaur. And God just... Nothing to do here. Poor guy. Uh, he just got caught out easily. Another Arena Blood that's successful. The Mars is doing what the Bounty Hunter should have been doing this whole time. The Dust hits him. They saw him this whole time. They know there's a ward up there. The Sentry's there anyway. So that's going to be a dead Bounty Hunter. And... I, I don't know, man. I don't know when Extreme wants to call it GG. You are not ready to play this late game. Dyer's middle path is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Let's see. Bottom lane. Are they going to try to go for... Dyer's bottom ah, they're going to go for tier 1 for now. Concentrating on the tier 2. Goes to go for the storm. Oh, the arena of blood is not available yet. Lich in trouble. They're gonna catch as well. The poor Veleor. Two heroes dead. Hand of God hits God. Going for Storm Stormer. But impossible. Malak is stuck in that Willow Wisp. They just can't fight this team fight. Extreme are just losing people left and right. A Tusk is forced to actually buy back and they get another searing chains onto the storm, which is not really needed because they already used that Songless Sire and they have the Spear of Mars ready. Can he evade it? He cannot. He gets hit right by the spear. Perfect timing. And God is almost dead though. Yo Scepter, he can almost get away. There's the Arena Blood blocking his ex exit. He ball lightnings away to safety, but they're gonna lose a Tusk a second time and Kellen is just dying. All the time, Kellen. I think you spent more time dead than alive this game, I swear. What is happening? This team, Flight of Moon 2.0, is just destroying you, but I don't know what Extreme is doing. You have not... I mean, sure, the draft might be questionable. It might seem weird to a lot of people, but it's not a bad draft. If you play it well, it's a good draft. It just didn't work out for them at all. And they're just, they're just desperately trying to go for kills. They're, like, salivating. They're, like... Uh, that, that kid in Tinder who only has shirtless pics, you know, is thirsty as hell. That, that, that is that person. They're desperate. They're constantly looking for whatever they can find. Just scraps anywhere. It's terrible. There's no rhyme or reason to any of their actions. Why are you there, Storm? Are they going to find you again? There's... Oh, I don't think that was a good Yul Semper, to be honest. God. Ah, uh, they didn't have the Mars nearby, but they catch the bounty again. He's just cannon fodder. Kellen does nothing this game but die. Oh, Extremum, don't let this game get to you. You did not execute the draft properly. Sure, it was an experimental draft. It didn't work out. Change pace. Don't let this game affect that game number two. Right? Don't let it be a 2-0 stomp like this. Because right now, there's no way. You, you got to make sure you talk between your teammates. And understand that this, you know, there's one fluke. Things happen. It's not that big a deal. But th this game is just an easy stomp for them. Okay, they go from behind. Caraman goes crazy, but there's the Spear of Blood catching. There's Nature's Prophet. Instead, they go for the Chen, or sorry, for the Lich first. Now, finally stopping the team from Nature's Prophet. Nothing to do for him. Valior is next target. Can they finish him off? Valior is taking the long route. The Mars is trying to flank him, and he's going to find it. But the Spear of Mars is super easy. Again, losing two people for free. They haven't taken the tier 2 in the mid lane, so they can't do any more, but they're going to continue. And Snare, no, not again, man. No, this happens to you again. This is terrible. They're trying to body block him. Illidan has the Manta style soon. They didn't in Snare. They don't have Song either, so they can't continue this. Ball lighting even came by. God using up all his mana just to try to save the Bounty Hunter. Radiance middle tower is under attack. 
Yeah, the, the idea behind the Bounty Hunter was definitely the pickoff potential, and I can see the logic behind this draft. Just because I, this draft didn't work out, and sure, but I, I don't want to criticize the draft because the logic is solid. You know, like, you're going for a lot of pickoff potential, and PT stabilizes your lanes. Yeah, it's true that you're going to want a beefy hero to tank, as, as, aside from Bounty Hunter, it's true. But the idea here I'm seeing is just that you should have rotated much more early. You, know? you should have won your lanes and everything. These are the things that led to the situation you are now. So whatever changes here. I don't really want to criticize the draft because I think it just wasn't employed properly this game. Tusk. Also, I'm just a fan of creative drafts, man. I, I think creative drafts have a place in Dota. I, I always like when pe teams experiment. It's the first game of best of three. This is group changes. Don't get too mad if your team loses, man. It's not that big a deal. They're still in the tournament. Lich. Okay, they're just getting... They're just getting annihilated at this point. Extreme is starting to cut the lane. This is the smartest choice, actually. This is the right choice. I don't know why Bounty Hunter is there. I guess it's have some experience. But they already have creeps with them. And they just have to print out these creeps. So Storm needs to get rid of these creeps now. Guardian Gaze has been used to try to heal them back up. And they're going to tank this tower best they can. There's so many illusions. There comes the Storm. Uh, the creeps are still alive. Uh, I think. No, no, they killed him. They killed him. Okay, so the creeps are dead. So back to protection will trigger any second. I think it takes around 7 seconds to trigger. I think the melee racks are not going to last long enough. And they even go for range racks, because why not? They even find Malak in the bottom, in the top lane, sorry. As Illidan already has the Diffusal Blade, so where are you going to go? Nowhere. Malak is... Okay, is he really going to accomplish this? <laughs> the Coiling Blade is not in the inventory. Really, you had the whole song on the side, and you didn't think of putting your Coiling Blade in the inventory? Oh, that's bad. This is bad. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. You just lost it. You just didn't get a kill on the MP. It's no big deal. Now the creeps are there. You're going to take the last tier too. I don't think you need to go for mega creeps, but sure. Style points, right? Play this as safe as possible. You want to secure this game, number one. Here, I'm gonna go for the Roshan Kellen. Joining, okay, extreme. There's a smoke. See what they can find. Non Grata. That's gonna be an easy hero to kill, actually. Non Grata, I don't know what you're there. They have the Arena of Blood. Can they counter initiate this? They can't. They tried as fast as they could. Non Grata kind of tanked this smoke unnecessarily, but they get a Roshan from this. Not too bad. Also, it's not like this is gonna really change the game, to be honest. Stormer Stormer continues further. He's like, guys, you thought the Mars was the problem? Ha ha ha. Let me laugh at you. Ball Lightning, I think the idea is to go for support, yeah, kill the Coddle, do they have the team fight? Willowis can still be used, Fishman doesn't get it off in time, Glimmer Kate might save him, the Blinding Light, Willowis used, and Fishman makes it out of here alive, at least for now, they find the Willowis, Black Angel's being chased by Illusions, Valior can't really make it out of here alive, and that's gonna be just a huge win, knowing the way of Fly to Moon, no Mars, no problem, seems like. Elden rotates to the top lane, where they're going to try to find a tier 2 as well here. Radiant are scanning. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Elden. Takes a tower here in the top lane, no problem. Dyer's top tower has fallen. The and they're gonna go for Dyer's the tier three. Paul Lighting trying to defend this. I mean, just at this point, extreme. What are you hoping for, man? The, the only chances you really have of winning this game is if Fly to Moon have a, like a heart attack and they literally die, and then you might be able to win when they're all disconnected. Oh, Sakura Siren set up for the final fight. Come on, GG before the final fight happens.
Don't let them humiliate you one last time. They have Arena Blood. They don't want to use it, actually. They're humiliating you without it. There's the Arena Blood catching the storm. Malik also in trouble. Has a Mjolnir on him, though. They deal a fair amount of damage, but Mandy Hunter's already gone. She lost her carry, and I don't think Malik's going to last too long either. Valior's killed. So is Malik. GG. Caught. There we go. 26 minutes in. This elongated so much more than it should have. Easy win for Flight of Moon. Let's hope Extreme can do better in the second game. I mean, that, that was... Yeah. I don't know if I'm afraid to say outdraft because honestly, they didn't play well either. So that was just a, a game of Dota that didn't go their way. Let's so hope it was just a fluke and game number two can be a bit better or a bit more even between both teams. We'll come back shortly at game number two. My name is D Swordfish. I've been your caster for today. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Apologies for any ads you might watch during the, during the transmission. It's been a pleasure casting for you guys and we'll be back shortly with game number two before though we have a message from our sponsors guys our partner egv.com gives you an awesome proposal first deposit but also up to six hundred dollars at egv.com you can also find convenient service daily quests and a bonus system interested click on the banner under the broadcast and learn EGB, See you guys your esports betting world the only place to find the widest choice of popular games and matches to win real money choose your bet on a single event or express of several matches with dizzy odds serving the market for seven years with over 800,000 users. Join now to get your bonus for the first deposit up to $600. EGB, you know for sure who's gonna win. See you now.